This tutorial will show you another five secret tips that are hidden from view in Final Cut Pro. And starting with number one, background render. And the hard facts are that Final Cut Pro, and in fact any video editing application, needs to render the changes you make in the edit prior to exporting. That means after you finish editing and then ask for export, the application needs to spend time rendering before it starts the actual export. And this can be quite a long time, dependent on both the length of the video, as well as how many effects and colour corrections you've used. And Final Cut can do this rendering in the spare time between you making an edit and during the time you're thinking about the next edit, or in fact, while you're out at lunch. And the result is that when you're ready to export, the required rendering has already happened, so your export appears to be much quicker. It sounds wonderful. But as with most things, there's always a downside. In this case, it's the fact that these render files keep building up on top of previous renders earlier in the edit, so that your hard disk fills up significantly with more and more render files. You could from time to time delete the render files not being used. As an example, select an event, select the file menu, and delete generated event files. Delete unused render files only. That's one solution. The other is to stop the rendering from happening in the first place. And this again is something you should think about if Final Cut is slowing down. Select Preferences under the Final Cut Pro menu. In the Playback menu, untick Background Rendering. But if you do like the advantages of background rendering to speed up your export, there's another workaround to consider. The default time that background rendering starts is after 0.3 of a second. And this means that it's continually switching between editing and rendering at short notice. This slows down the computer fractionally each time it tries to switch. I suggest that you change that start time to 30 seconds, so it isn't continually switching when you're editing. While you're looking at the Preferences menu, let's look at the Player background. When you're resizing images in the viewer, there's always the danger of it not fitting the whole viewer window, which means you'll have black bars or edges showing when you export. I'll select Transform in the viewer by right-clicking and rotate this image to make the horizon a little more horizontal. It's easy to miss the little bits of black at the corners. So when you've got Preferences open, select the Playback tab as in the last tip and change Player Background to Checkerboard. And now you can see where the video is not filling the whole viewer. And don't fret, that checkerboard is only for viewing while you're editing. It'll export as black. And number three, range check. These will help you create a professional color grade. It'll stop you blowing out the highlights or going below zero when crushing blacks. Go to view above the viewer and you'll see range check. Turn on Lua and you'll get zebra showing that will let you know if you're losing detail by going past zero or a hundred on the waveform. And it's best to have the scopes turned on in the viewer and the browser turned off in the window menu. Show the Luma waveform in the scopes. You'll see that this clip has got zebras in the hair. These show in the scopes as beyond the 100 mark. Reduce the highlight sliders until the zebras have gone. There's also zebras showing around the collar and the face, and detailed in the line below zero in the scopes. But now the face looks washed out. So reduce the brightness in the midtones, and you'll see the scopes reduce in that center area and the face darkens. Number four, overlays. Overlays only show while you're editing. They do not export. They're a way of showing things in the viewer window for your temporary use. And the most frequently used would be the horizon overlay that's built in. You can also upload to Final Cut Pro your own custom overlays. And I'll show you those in a moment. The overlays are found in the view menu above the viewer. Show horizon overlays brings that yellow line in so you can adjust your horizon. 
Now I've turned that off and show custom overlay shows the currently active overlay, which can be changed when you choose custom overlays. And these are the ones I've got installed and you can download these for free. Select the link in the description below. Click the eye above to find out more about overlays. And finally, number five, and that's the difference between better quality and better performance. In the background render section, it showed the possible slowing of your computer. And this next tip will also help if you've got performance issues. It's always good to see the best quality when you're editing, but if your computer's slowing down, sometimes it's better to work with a slightly lower resolution and to see less of that spinning beach ball. So you can choose between the better performance option if your computer is slowing, or the better quality if everything's running fine, and thus it will show you the best quality possible. But one thing to note, Final Cut will only ever show you an estimation of what the export will look like. So if you really want to be sure of what the export quality is, select a small portion of your timeline with the range tool and export that to check. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. I'm here to help. So if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one tuition in Final Cut Pro, just click on training finalcutpro.com. I'll be happy to set up a personalized training program for you. But if you're looking for answers on a specific topic, I also offer free Final Cut Pro support via email. Click the i above for the link to my free support site. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below if you've got areas that you struggle with in Final Cut, and I'd be happy to produce a video to help you solve those issues. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and press the bell.